Wow. Good morning. morning. Well, uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm Reverend Cynthia, and I want to say thank you. This is my, it has been my honor for the last year to be on your council. I want to thank Dr. David for inviting me, David Aurelio and the staff for taking care of me, Ty for playing with me in the music field. I mean, it's just been exquisite. And I want to acknowledge you for risking, for stepping outside of the proverbial box and saying, let's reinvent church. Let's reinvent spiritual community, yes? Because, you know, God is not static. There is an evolution that is going on consistently and constantly. And so we are manifestations of this energetic. Therefore, we are evolving. If we say yes, Yes. it's easy. If we say no, it's interesting. (laughs) I'll just let that sink in, yes. So it was wonderful for Dr. David to invite us to look at the Seeds and Harvest book. And my topic today is significance. And the definition of significance is the quality of being worthy of attention, importance. And this is what is said in the scale of being, which is the fourth chapter. At every moment of time, Humankind stands upon the eternal scale of meaning. There is no object or event that has ever taken place or is taking place now that is without significance. The significance of an object or event for the individual is a direct index to the level of his consciousness. And I'm going to add her because he just forgot us. (laughs) So... I want to talk to you about where you are in your life. You know, you individually and the collective consciousness of this community is in transition. I grew up in the African Methodist Episcopal Church, and I'd like you to say that three times fast. (laughs) And I was confused. Because they would be, every Sunday they'd be telling us all these Bible stories. And I'm like, what does this mean to me? How is this relevant to me? So I remember them telling the story of Cain and Abel, right? So, so Adam and Eve have their oldest son, Cain, and then they have another son, Abel. And then I think there was a lot more, but it got confusing. <laughs> and so... And so the story is, is that, is that, so I guess, you know, I guess really God was their grandfather. (laughs) So, so Cain, it's time to give gifts, right? And so Cain gives, you know, he's a farmer and he gives, you know, fruits of the land. And then Abel gives a, a newborn lamb, a sheep, right? And so... And so the Lord um, is not happy with, with Cain's contribution, but is honoring of Abel's. Cain moves into a state of pisosity, <laughs> gets jealous, and kills his brother. Okay, I'm going to stop there because this was interesting to me. I lived in the hood in Minneapolis. There were no farmers or shepherds. with me especially you know I'm watching the community and I'm watching the people who go to church on Sunday and they dress fine they get out of their cars and I mean they're looking good then they're partying in the in the in the bars they're hanging out they're doing mean stuff to each other and then and then on Sunday they're talking about amen 
So I'm like, okay, there, something is off here. So I was thrilled when I found metaphysics, when I found new thought, right? So now let me go back to Cain and Abel and let me tell you what the metaphysical meaning is. So the Lord is consciousness, is the law. Cain represents the, the material world, the, the world of effects and illusions and, and, and so which jealousy lives in, correct? And Abel represents the, the view of possibility, infinite possibilities. So he gave of his first offering because that was the best thing he could do in that moment, opening the field of circulation. I, what, I, what I want to tell you about all of this is, is that, that they, Cain and Abel represent the two, level, two levels of consciousness, right? The, 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 the positive, uplifting consciousness and, and the, the consciousness that of, of negativity and effects and appearances. We're living in a culture right now, we're living in a world right now that's so interesting because we get to pick where we want to live. We get to look at what's happening on the news. We get to look at what's happening in the world and choose how we want to respond, how we want to live, how we want to express. And I must admit, I sometimes float between Cain and Abel. <laughs> because the work that, that you come to this center for is continuous. It is ongoing. It is not something that you do on Sunday, get fed, and then la, 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 you have enlightenment. It is something that you do moment by moment by moment. Your spiritual practice is essential. Yeah. Your way of being, your way of responding is essential. And so the significance of your life, the meaning of your life, you get to step back and look at this scale of meaning and see where are you on the spectrum. I decided that as I was looking at this today, I wanted to talk to you because you, because you are in transition, because you will be calling in a new senior minister, because you will be evolving, you get to participate fully or not. It's not just, oh, you know, we're ready to move on and we're ready to change. You are the change you've been waiting for. You are the ones you have been waiting for. There's no savior. There's no senior minister that's going to come in here and walk on water. <laughs> that's my brother over there. is that the community is you. So what you think, what you say, how you respond, how you act feeds the force field called this community. So I have three questions for you today. Here's the first one. Who have you come here to be? Dr. Gary Simmons is a minister in unity. He's been an ordained minister for 35 years. And and he, when he was getting his PhD, he did it on um, looking at spiritual communities and, and the kind of revolving door and the things that challenged communities. And, and he talked about the fact that, that a successful community has to move out of the minister mindset into the mission concept and become mission-centric. Because senior ministers come and go. But if the community is to live, it has to have a vibrancy and a mission that will move it forward. And so I took some of his workshops. He does a lot of work with CSL communities. And I took one of his workshops. And, and one of the questions was, who have you come here to be? And how it worked was, he asked you to think of people that you admire, that uplift you and ignite and inspire you and to write down their qualities. Then he asks you to look at the list and see what six qualities on that list lived in you. And then he said, so this is who you have come here to be. How you doing? <laughs> and the interesting thing is 
What came into the room is the feelings of unworthiness. What came into the room is the excuses for why we're not doing what we know we're called to do. What came into the room was the fears and the doubts, you know, that, that, that perplex human beings. The question for you, who have you come here to be and are you responding to it? Are you living the life you know you came here to do? Or are you giving yourself reasons why not now? What I want you to know is if not now, when? Erica Luquette, who with uh, Lisa Ferraro, a duo that have gone through um, spiritual communities for a really long time. She made her transition oh. two weeks ago. Oh. But I want to tell you this. She and Lisa were my music at my women's conference last January. And I also asked her to speak because she had had several bouts with cancer. She had gone through a lot of stuff. What was interesting about this is she was very clear that every day was a miracle. Every day was a gift. And so she was not going to spend one moment in the muck and the mire. She was going to bring her light, her love, her gifts, her music, wherever she went. Because when it was time to go, she was going to be filled up, not depleted. And that's how she left. And People all over were praying for her. And, and, and music was being played, and the choir from her community came and sang at her bedside to just mirror what she, what she had given to them. So who you come here to be is really important. And so I'm asking you in this day, step up. Shake up that crap within you that no longer serves you. Now, when you do that, not everyone will love it. <laughs> because they like you being a doormat. They like you being available whenever they call. They like you saying yes, even though they know you mean no. When you shake it up, what that does is it invites the universe to correspond and to sync up with you. So Brene Brown has a new book, Braving the Wilderness, The Quest for True Belonging and the Courage to Stand Alone. This is what she says. True belonging is the spiritual practice of believing in and belonging to yourself so deeply that you can share your most authentic self with the world and find sacredness in both being a part of something and standing alone in the wilderness. True belonging doesn't require you to change who you are. It requires you to be who you are. You have a voice. God gave you a voice. You're here to use it. I was so fascinated in the elections because it didn't matter what side you were on, people were out. <laughs> people were knocking on doors, making calls. You know, I didn't answer the phone, but because <laughs> I got tired of them, right? But, but people were saying, I'm not running for an office, but I want to contribute. I want to get out there. I want to bring my light. I want to invite people into, into my being. Here's the thing. It doesn't matter if it's election. You know, on Thursday, I got the uh, opportunity to be with some of you in the thriving the holidays. Some of us, you know, holidays are interesting for us because we get to go home. And I think it was Ram Dass that said, if you think you're enlightened, go home. <laughs> but the thing is, is that... Uh, we talked about that home's not the issue. Family's not the issue. Your mama, your sister, your brother, no. no. You are the thing. 
You get to bring the level of consciousness that you want to experience. Now, you get to have exit strategies when they act crazy. <laughs> but you get to set the tone. I'm a certified um, clarity coach, and, and it, Clarity International works with a lot of organizations, and, and um, they work up on, on really consciousness, but what they call it, there's a lot, ex, part of it's called shift. And in shift, you look at the moments you step into discontent, the moments you are confused, the moments you are in transition, and the moment you are in transformation. Now, most of us, when we step into those places, we get worried and we start doubting and we start questioning. And because, especially in science of mind, we are so smart, <laughs> we think. And the, and the wheels start turning. And so we think that that's not a good thing, but it is, it's a choice point. It's the point where you get to choose where you are going to live. Are you going to live below that line where you are in a state of, of concern and depletion and negative thoughts are just spiraling you downward? Or are you going to step above the line and you step into creation and evolution and enthusiasm and excitement for life? So I'm going to read you some of the lines, that some of the words that are below the line just for the individual in this concept. Fear, exhaustion, anxiety, defiance, self-importance, habituation, overdoing. Can you relate to this on any level? <laughs> I have a lot, I coach a lot of people and a lot of clients come to me telling me about how stuck they feel and how challenged they feel and how out of sync they feel. And, and, and the thing is like then, where, where are you, what are you feeding? What are you putting in the seeds, or what seeds are you planting in consciousness? Because the thing is, is that your attention is everything. You give significance to what's happening in your life. You make it up. If there's no time and there's no space in the quantum field, which is what we're taught, then that means you get to choose the reality you want to live. Y'all hear me? Yeah. You believe me? Yeah. Uh-huh. I know some of you don't. I know some of y'all go, yeah, but you don't know what's going on in my life. I don't. But what I do know is if one person can change their reality, everybody can. I want to say to you that, that your attention is extraordinarily important. I've been staying at David and Ty's house, and, and there's a magic room there. It's called the guest room. It's really for me, and I let other people stay there when I'm not there. <laughs> but there's something about that room where, I mean, serious dreams happen, right? So the other night, um, I'm working on the talk, and I, and you know, it's really interesting because talks don't just drop in all in one way for me. They they drop in in little pieces, and so I'm like, what do I want to talk about um, in this area, right? And I have this dream, and I'm on this plane, which is not unusual because I'm on a lot of planes, right? And I I get off the plane, and I get off, and I realize I've left something on the plane. So I go back on the plane, they let me back on, which would not happen. <laughs> and I go to get this thing, and then I realize, oh no, I've left the other stuff I took off and I've left it out there with all the people, and I better get out there and get it, right? So I run off the plane, and I get to this thing, and I go, oh no, I left something on the plane. So I am running back and forth on the plane. But that is sort of my personality. <laughs> and so I start thinking about the fact that, that when you are not focused, you are distracted like that. You're split. Oh, I need to do this. Have you ever gone to a room and can't remember why you're in there? <laughs> I've been
been doing that my whole life, so I don't have anything to do with age, I can say. So, so I started thinking about this, and I started thinking about how many people are telling me that they feel depleted. How many people are telling me they feel exhausted? How many people are telling me they feel distracted and they're all over the place, right? They're running in and off the plane. This is a news flash. There is no such thing as multitasking. You do one thing at a time. You may do fast. You may juggle a lot of balls, but you only touching one at one time. So I just want you to think about where is your attention. If you're split, that's how the universe will respond to you. If you're distracted, you will have some interestingly distracted people in your life. <laughs> if you are not focused and grounded, then these other interesting beings will come in. You, I'm asking you to turn the camera lens back here. Turn the camera back and get real with yourself. One of the things that, that Gary Sinlands talks about in community is, can you get real with the good news and the interesting news? Can you get real with the light and the shadow? Where are you showing up? Where are you not showing up? Where are you giving? Where are you not giving? Where are you expecting others to take care of you when you are the one responsible for your life? So, who have you come here to be? Where is your attention? And the last question is, are you in integrity with your soul? You know, you've got a mission. God loved you so much. You were so important. It breathed its life into you, and you manifested on this plane. You were so important that you were, you were encoded with gifts, power, expansion, and ways of being that not another human being on this planet has. You were so important that your iridology is, is original. Your fingerprints are original. So then what could possibly be in the way of you flowing and soaring and, and, and expressing fully except you? You know, um, I... I, I've been putting, in the last four years since I left full-time ministry, I've been, I've been traveling a lot and I put a lot of attention on speaking and teaching in different parts of the world. And it's been really important for me. And um, I, I sort of moved a little bit away from my creative side, my, my singing, actor. Now, I do, I do mind body, so there's always movement and stuff when I do classes and when I speak for, for different organizations. But, but the part of me the, that creates all the time, you know, I haven't put a lot of attention on it. So when David invited me here to be on the council, um, I don't even know how Ty and I got in the conversation. But we got in this conversation about the fact that a lot of people can't meditate. They just can't sit and kind of get still. So what if we would create some moving meditations? Now, we didn't know what that meant. We just said, we're going to do that. And some of you that were here last time I was here, we, uh, we danced to one of them, right? Well, this is the interesting thing. What I realized, because um, um, we've been working on uh, another track while I've been here called Awake, and what, what I realized is there was a part of my soul that missed that creative part of me. That missed the singing, and that missed, you know, the, the playing with music and rhythms and all of that. And, and I want you to know that sometimes the universe whispers, hey, you know, maybe you should do this. And you go, oh, I'm making that up. 
So then the universe goes, hey, maybe you should do this. And you go, I, I don't have time for that. <laughs> then the universe goes, listen, <laughs> I'm going to sit you down if you don't pay attention. Right? Now, I've been sit down a few times, so I float between the still small voice and the one in the middle. So I, I, I get this feeling. I have this friend who is really a... Um, She's a medium, and she, she connects to Akashic Records and things. And so I get on the phone with her, and the first thing out of her mouth is she says, you know, you're supposed to be doing more creative stuff. You're supposed to be doing, you know, you know there's a calling for you to do all this. And, and I'm going, okay, God, I heard you. Really, I don't have to sit down. <laughs> but what I want you to know, and I want to ask you in this moment, you know, are you in integrity with your calling? What is calling you? And are you saying yes, even though it makes no sense? Because obedience isn't always linear. You get a calling and, 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 and the universe doesn't go, listen, on February 15th, I would like you to be at 2535 Dale Street and I'm gonna give you this gift. It says, wake up. It says, bring your voice. It says, write your book. It says, you know, serve your community. It, it calls you, and, and it doesn't tell you how, and it doesn't tell you when. It just says, listen. I don't know where David's going, but he's listening. Your job is to lift him up. Your job is to, is to understand that he's taking steps without knowing what the next thing is. This community is taking steps without knowing what the next thing is. Let me tell you what Joseph Campbell says. If you can see your path, laid out in front of you step by step, you know it's not your path. <laughs> your own path you make with every step you take. That's why it's your path. So as you step out, you know, I'm gonna call for you in this moment to, to up-level your prayers today. Up-level your prayers for this community, for David, for the new leader that's coming in here. And by the way, that new leader doesn't need to be up here on a pedestal. That needed leader needs to be in community with you. Because there's no leader on this planet who does not have their own stuff that's not going through their own human experience. Think about this. If every single person in this room stood in the power of who they've come to be, placing their full attention on the grace and the grandeur of God, and absolutely was in integrity with their sole purpose, with their reason for being, with their way of contributing, they would be the able consciousness. They would be, you would be, undeniable, unstoppable force. They'd have to blow out all the walls in this place <laughs> to be able to fit you. But it's you. It's all about you. I love you. I was telling David that I, I felt emotional this morning saying goodbye to you because here's the thing. When you step into a community, you are automatically a part of it. Whether you sit in the back row, <laughs> whether you are like super in servant leadership, it doesn't matter. You're a part of it. So just know this, uh, you, uh, you go with me. In my heart, in my memories, in my prayers. Because I see the extraordinary potential and possibility 
of this community. But it can only fulfill itself if you are fully engaged. It is very easy to be below the line. It is very easy to, you know, we live in a culture of whiners. And you know why we whine? Because we, because we get rewarded for it. People think we're a victim. Or they, or they give us gifts to shut us up. <laughs> but what if your discontent, your confusion, your transformative moments got translated into love, into possibility, because God is everywhere. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes in this moment. Uncross your legs and sit in your seats. And I'm going to ask you to ask your innermost being, who have you come here to be? A leader, a teacher, a guide, a supporter, a compassionate being. Who have you come here to be? And then where does your attention need to be to support that? Because the words that are above the line are excitement, enthusiasm, love, dedication, authenticity, high noticing, and effortlessness. Where, where do you want to put your attention to support who you come here to be and to be in integrity with your soul? What do you need to let go of that could possibly be a barrier to that growth and that power? We let go of anything that would stand in the way of the truth of who we have come here to be. Divine intelligence, power, light, love, grace, harmony is the energetic of all, in all, as all, through all. It is my life and it is the life of every person here, every person hearing this prayer, every person connected to this community. And what we do in this moment is we stand in the awareness that we are activating and reactivating who we have come here to be with full force. To bring the light, to bring the truth, to bring the grace, to lift this community to new heights of awareness beyond our wildest imaginings. And so on the altar of light, we place all doubts, all fears, all ways of being that are no longer in service to the high vision. to lift the mission of our lives, of our community, of our nation, and of our world. We stand in the awareness that God's grace is the sufficiency of all. And so this is where we place our attention. We, we place the whining to the side. We place the discontent to the side. We, we place the confusion to the side and we call forth light, love, dedication, authenticity, power, high noticing. We call it in now. We lift this community in, in extraordinary ways because where two or more gather, there is great power. And so we call forth the high vision, the mission expanding, the new spiritual director that is called here to, to be in partnership with this community, to be in collaboration with this community. We lift Dr. David Alt for the next iteration of his presence on this planet, for his ministry, for his mission. We lift up his mind, his heart, his body, every aspect of life. We call in the health and the well-being of the divine. We call in abundance. We call in clarity. And what I know is that is that where there is intentionality synchronicity coincides and so I'm grateful I'm grateful to speak this word I'm grateful for this community I'm grateful for the myriad of ways in which you serve, serve. known and unknown seen and unseen <coughs> breathe it in Breathe it in. 
Hi, I'm David Ault, and I simply want to say thanks. Thanks for taking the time to watch our broadcast here at Spiritual Living Center of Atlanta. We have a vision, and that vision is to reawaken all to their spiritual magnificence. And one of the ways that we are able to do that is through this very medium of broadcasting. So if you got anything out of this, if you felt in any way inspired or if something spoke to you directly, then I extend an invitation to you to become a part of our family by donating. And there are many ways in order for you to be able to do that. One is to simply go to our website at slca.com and there you will find all different kinds of prompts that will help you support what it is that we are doing here in Atlanta. One way is to become a pledger. That means that you decide on a monthly basis that you are going to help us with this vision. Another way is to donate through our management system called Fellowship One, another through PayPal, and another even easier way is on your cell phone. You can do what's called text to tithe, and that number is 404-796-7030. Again, thank you so much for your support, and I invite you to come back weekly to see what it is that we're up to. Blessings.